Senator Joe Manchin was on MSNBC and he was talking about his opposition to the Republicans' proposal to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act. Now, throughout the course of the interview, I thought that he said things that were mostly agreeable. He talked about how you shouldn't just repeal the Affordable Care Act. You should just try to build upon it uh, and fix where it's lacking. However, there was a portion of the interview where he was kind of put on the spot and asked about what he would particularly do to fix the Affordable Care Act. And his answer was really perplexing to me. Let's say the system was kept in place as is, but you had one change you could make to Obamacare to improve it, whether it's for the country at large or West Virginia specifically. What would that one change be? Well, the first change would be is the market basically for the 26-year-olds. Mm -hmm. I've got 26 year old. I haven't found one to bought it yet. I haven't found one 26. Okay, how do you make it? How do you make it uh, more learn for 26? You change the requirements of that plan. You have catastrophic. You change it. We call it a copper plant, and it should be about 80 to 100 dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's 46. And only young people can purchase the catastrophic plan, or can everyone purchase that catastrophic plan? Well, you have to open the market up sure. the product of the market. And some people, right. if you're a healthy 45 year old sure. and you're doing everything right, you don't want all this other. So we. Yeah, but we the never thing about healthcare is that you don't know when you're going to get hit with something. That's right? exactly. So, so if, if you, you get catastrophic chance, coverage to a bunch of people, you're, right. you're going to end up with a lot of people not having coverage that they need. It's yeah, but hard. That's so his answer tells me that Democrats are not having meetings about the messaging. They're not talking about how they respond to the flaws of the Affordable Care Act, because that answer is easy. He talked about, you know, well, this whole thing is broken because we need 26-year-olds to buy health insurance, but they don't want to do it because they're healthy. So we offer them, you know, uh, ca catastrophic coverage. Okay, that's not really the flaw. What you need to do is you answer every single question about fixing Obamacare with a public option or single payer. And I know that they're not going to support single payer. So at a minimum, you say public option. So the fact that Democrats haven't gotten together, the fact that Chuck Schumer hasn't rallied them and said, look, anytime we ask about what we do uh, to fix Obamacare because it's flawed, you can't deny that fact, we tell people that we want a public option. But his answer really communicates to me that they're completely lost. They realize that they're opposed to Donald Trump's uh, new bill, but they don't know exactly what they would do differently. So, I mean, they're kind of in the same predicament as Republicans. They're trying to defend a shitty health care law that is, quite frankly, completely broken, uh, but they don't necessarily know what to do to fix it. The answer is very, very simple. You say you support a public option. I mean, that that's... That's such a moderate reform that you do because for those of you that want government-run healthcare, you have the option, hence the public option, and you appease those people. So it makes no sense to me why this wasn't his answer. A public option would bring down the cost of healthcare premiums because you have a government-run plan that forces the private health insurance companies to compete with government. So they can't rip us off because that government-run plan will not be based on profit. It'll be based on coverage. But we have a model right now where these private insurance companies rip us off and they have a profit-driven healthcare model. If you have that model, you're going to see a conflict between covering people and getting them health care and profits. Those two things are very difficult to reconcile. So it, it makes no sense to me why I don't see Democrats hammering away at a public option. They should be saying, look, we move to public option and from there we build upon the public option and we move towards a single payer health care system. That's the only solution at this point, but they're not doing it. So uh, I... <laughs> It's just so frustrating to watch. And look, we all know that Joe Manchin's response is unacceptable because he's required to work within the confines of the private insurance industry because, would you look at that, he accepted over half a million dollars from the health industry, and that includes almost 200000 from insurance companies. Now, in addition to the corruption component of this story, Joe Manchin resides in a red state. He was elected in West Virginia, and he's a Democratic senator from West Virginia, so he thinks he has to support the more conservative health care plan and be in favor of a free market model. But what he doesn't realize is just the other day, Bernie Sanders was in your state, Joe, and he said this and was applauded. My view is different than most in Congress. I happen to believe that health care is a right, and we should move toward a Medicare for all. <laughs> So, I mean, the takeaway is that I am incredibly frustrated with Democrat strategy or lack thereof because, I mean, 
you know that this is going to be a battle. So how have you guys not come up with a really quick, simple fix? Public option. And you just keep talking about a public option. You go on every single show. You say, we are going to move towards a public option. How have you not done this? How have you all not gotten on the same page when it comes to fixing the affordable character? Because you know that you have to come up with something. You have to come up with some type of fix. And the fact that they're just not all on the same page of public option, which is something that's just moderate healthcare reform, proves that they are just beyond repair when it comes to corruption. So I just find this frustrating. I mean, look, I, I don't want to give you the impression that everything he said during this interview was wrong because I agree with most of what he said. However... When it comes to fixing the Affordable Care Act, the solution is easy. We all like Medicare. It has a very high approval rating. We all love Medicaid. Have a system where we have a government option so that way we don't have to go through these private health insurance companies that rip us off. I mean, my deductible is $6,500. I don't have the money. I cannot pay $6,500. So I'm tired of being ripped off. If I had the option of going to a government-run plan... I would absolutely gravitate towards that system because when I was on Medicare, or excuse me, Medicaid, it was a much better plan than my shitty health insurance plan. So they've got to realize that they're not going to win anybody over by proposing just these little vanilla reforms that are just band-aids on a huge problem. The answer is public option, and ultimately, that move towards a public option should facilitate the shift towards single payer ultimately because that's the end game single payer that's non-negotiable for me a single payer option would end this debate once and for all and the fact that they're not even talking about a public option and we don't see them just talking about this day in and day out it, it just shows that they're so lost Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.